everyone, and welcome back to the Between Realities VR podcast. It's your favorite VR podcast, and it's live right now, and you're watching it. Things just could not get any better, could mm -hmm. they? My name is Alex VR. I'm co-host of this show. I'm really excited about that, actually, because I love it. And I'm joined here alongside of the other host of this show, my dear friend, Skiva. Hey, dude. What up? I love the show, too, man. How you doing? How it's you doing good. this week? Doing great. Yeah, All right. We really are our own, our, our, our own biggest fans. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to do it, man. Make the content you want to see. Yeah. And uh, maybe other people will show up. Who knows? You Looks guys, like some you guys people think, showed up. You guys think you like Between Realities. <laughs> you should ask us how, what we think. We love it, you know. Let me get Alex's autograph after the show. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, what we actually love, maybe as much as this show, if not more, is the VR community. You know, especially because so many of them spend their time with us here every single week. Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. We do the show live on Fridays. It's Friday. We're live right now. If you're catching this on Friday oh, on thank YouTube, God, it's Friday. That's nice. Oh, it's it's a nice. beautiful thing. The show is also available on your podcast platform of choice just choose one mm -hmm. and go yeah. and search between iTunes, realities spotify anchor any of the things podbean i don't know a whole bunch i don't even know podbean. What they are. yeah <laughs> all right <laughs> like i had to hold back a few jokes I, I, yeah me too <laughs> by the way between realities officially partnered up with uploadvr.com Check out UploadVR.com, especially soon, because you might be seeing a little bit more of your boys on there oh. in the next few weeks or so. So yes. a little foreshadowing action. Yep. Um, thanks for joining us for the live chat, people. Mike Newton, numero uno for me. The weekend begins. You are goddamn right it does, sir. Thank you so much <laughs> for being here with us. Jansen Fox, TTV. That means What's he's a up? Twitch streamer. You guys Heck know yeah. that? TTV. You see a TTV and uh, somebody beats you in Rocket League and is TTV at the end of his name? Go watch the clip because the stuff is it. great yeah. definitely go watch it only if you would like to laugh jansen a is funny mofo he's a goofy dude mm -hmm. he is a goofy dude i think the last stream i watched he was dressed as a vending machine <laughs> that should give you an idea as to what you can expect <laughs> oh, uh, jansen, so for funny. one woo! what's hey, up dude thanks for going? being here thank you for being here for one we got shagsy hail to the kings oh that's right oh kenny Ooh, r what's kings. up dude kenneth roju roju rogu what's up dude What's up? I tried. Um, <laughs> Projectivity XR greetings. Thank you for joining us here for the live broadcast. Little Hussein X, our homie. What's up, Hussein? Oh, Danny Hunkley, the mod. This, Danny, dude, that blue What's color, up, buddy? that blue color for your name, man. I almost cruised right past it. Heck we yeah. were just saying because at the beginning of our show notes, which sometimes we use. Sometimes we have show notes and we'll like use them. We always have show notes. Sometimes we just don't use them. Right. Well, sometimes yeah. I look at them, and today's not one of those days. But it says between. No, what does it say? Please subscribe in like huge letters because we want to remind <laughs> the audience to subscribe. And it's like big red, please subscribe. And we'll just like go straight past it and like never. Ever yeah, always forget people. about it. So, so um, yeah, if you could subscribe, that'd be cool. Subscribe to the channel because mm -hmm. you will uh, you won't regret it. There's no way to regret it. You wouldn't regret it, right? <laughs> like only oh if God, you don't I like VR. Can't believe I subscribed like, to this. Don't subscribe if you don't like VR, I guess. Um, yeah. Thanks for being here. <laughs> uh, Bluebell. What's up? What's up, Bluebell? Bluebell. Oh, the meta movie. Who's that? I wonder what's going Ooh. on with the meta movie. I guess we're going to talk about it. Florian Fibernberger. Here we go. He's here and listening. He's just not typing much because he's on his phone. I don't want your excuses, Florian. <laughs> Bust out your a key, USB keyboard, Bluetooth. I don't care. <laughs> you know, swipe, text, whatever it is, man. Do you, the thing. You be here Do and you, <laughs> you type. <laughs> uh, Endeavor One's here. Happy Friday, BR crew. Hello, dude. Happy Endeavor Friday One. to you. Laszlo216. Cleveland represent. I'm Laszlo. glad we have representation of Cleveland, Ohio Heck here. Heck yeah. Um, thank you, guys. Oh, it's rogue. Like red. Oh, rouge. No, what is it? Rouge. Red? Is that rouge? R I think rouge is red. Yeah. <laughs> he tried to give us so like like, like a hint and it just didn't. It's still confusing. Ah, God, I'm so dumb. <laughs> so anyway, thank you all for being here with us. Um, I think we should get the show started. Heck yeah. Joining us today is uh, a man that is responsible, largely in part responsible for creating one of my most memorable VR experiences ever like straight up. I, I, I talk about it on the show often. Um, so I'm really excited to have him here to join us and to kind of dive into this thing. Um, everyone, the creator of the meta movie and the director of alien rescue is here. Please welcome to between realities, Jason Moore. 
What the? <laughs> hey guys, happy Friday! I was and like, should we Friday. introduce? That was a great them? entrance. He's that was gone. a great entrance. Dude. <laughs> well, my dogs are about to start humping each other, so I can <laughs> run and grab two cookies, throw them on the ground. So I think we're safe. But we might get know, some I doggy you guys porn. In advance. I want you guys in advance. I yep. got these dogs, and sometimes they get they get horny for each other. I don't know what to. Especially know, when they know they're do. live on yeah. YouTube. Yeah, yeah, they they like mm -hmm. to bust up my Zoom calls all the time. Live. Just go ahead and demonetize us now. YouTube. That's cool. <laughs> Thank you guys so so much for having me here. I love your show, and I'm so stoked to spend my Friday afternoon with you guys. Heck yeah, man! Thanks for coming. We appreciate it. We certainly do. Mm -hmm. Um, dude, yeah. Like, where do we go? Where do we start? Okay, I guess we kind of just we start talking about it, right? So I've I've talked about the Meta movie at length, I think, on our on our show, and I don't know if you've ever kind of heard me recall my experiences in there, Jason, but. The, the the easiest way that I can think to describe it for me anyway was like like lucid dreaming you know like I wow. have been someone wow. who has like attempted to lucid dream and like take control of an alternate reality in a way that I know won't produce the same real consequences that would happen in like my normal waking life and it's extremely hard you know like to lucid dream you need to like literally like change your lifestyle like wake up in the middle of the night keep a journal like i don't know avoid light for the first hour you're up it's like a bunch of weird rules and stuff like that that you have to do but when i was in the meta movie i had multiple moments where like i was just awake you know what i mean like awake in the vr experience and like it's awesome to hear i felt like i had such agency over the experience that it it's, it's it was closer to me like lucid dreaming something than playing a vr game you know because when you're in there by the way everybody this is what's going on with the meta movie if you're unfamiliar you are the hero in an action film where all of the mm -hmm. other characters in this experience that you're in are played by real life actors so when you say something to one of these characters, they respond to you in a way that to me might as well be a dream character, you know, because like mm -hmm. when I when I'm talking to a character in my dream, you know, like I'm talking to my wife in my dreams, she's like responds to me and like, I don't know what she's going to say or what she's going to do. You know what I mean? It's exactly like that in the meta movie. So my hat goes off to you, man, because uh, it far surpassed my expectations. Same. And I awesome. had so awesome. much fun while I was in there. So. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if it's not obvious yet, we're fans of, of your work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That means so much. I mean, this is definitely a passion project. Uh, and you know, we're not, we're not rolling over in, in tons of money. So the, the praise and the good, and the good feedback, uh, and just knowing that like we're doing what we set out to do, uh, and that it's working and resonating with you, man, that, that just means a lot. It really, really does. And it's funny. I was, um, before I got on with you guys, I went back, I do a show recap, uh, after every show and I write up what happens and I take, you know, I have screenshots from the show and I post it for people on our discord. Um, and I went back to look at the show notes cause we've, we've done a lot of shows and it starts to all like, you oh, know, really? it just starts to all kind of mush together. So I went back to kind of refresh myself and that show was crazy. Dude. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, I, I mean, I've seen people kill Baxter before. Baxter has been murdered before. That does happen occasionally, but never in the ending scene. <laughs> like at the end of the at the end of the show, you uh, I don't know how much you remember. Uh, I remember. But, you know we. We, we, you know, we give audiences, um, like you said, we're, our whole goal is to give audiences massive, massive agency. And the whole story is designed to really flex around whatever choices you make and whatever you want to do. And so with that idea, we have to have like all sorts of kind of contingency plans. And we've got like six endings that are they're all ready to go at, at the drop of the hat. And we've seen and can kind of predict what our heroes, you know, that's our main character. We can kind of predict what they're going to do. Um, but then every once in a while, somebody comes along that is quite chaotic and unpredictable and these are actually the people that we like the most because we know what we're doing at this point so so for us when somebody comes along and and makes choices that are unusual or unique that gets everybody excited we all get like goosebumps and stuff and so uh so along the way you know we gave you opportunities to kind of go to the dark side what that's one of our big branching storylines is that you know if you want if you want to play heroic which most people do you know that's all set out for you but we do give you a couple of, of opportunities in there to like maybe explore a, a more villainous story arc um and you did you kind of teased around with that back and forth and nobody was really sure where you were going to go you <laughs> kind of you hooked up with baxter who's kind of the bad guy and you you helped him steal some drugs and you took his upgraded gun as like a bribe um 
but then at the end you like you kind of stayed heroic and you kind of ratted him out to the rest of the crew to like let everybody know like this guy was trying to murder you basically and then like out of nowhere you pulled out that gun that he gave you (laughs) boom and the the whole room just went quiet like totally silent we're like did did he just murder Baxter in the last two minutes of the show? It was fucking, sorry. It was, <laughs> man. It was fucking, I can say it. It yes. was fucking great. It was, Thank you, it was dude. one of the, one of the, one of the great shows, man. So uh, Thank and you. we appreciate good. that, you know, when, when we, you know, we offer ourselves to our audiences and we we're out there giving ourselves uh, and it, it's not easy. Um, so when somebody comes along and really kind of plays with us and, and digs into their character and stays in character and makes choices like you did, um, it just, it makes it all so much more fun for us so um it's you know it's definitely like a a like the whole show is like a relationship between what our guys are doing and what you guys are doing and you know it's like it's like story it's like shared storytelling is what i say so when we have moments like that it just makes it all worth it so thanks man of course dude it was uh it was amazing you know it really was in like you know i talk about having all of this agency over my actions while i was in there but I didn't have any expectations of that, first of all. And second of all, I didn't have really any expectations of the experience. So going into there, I didn't really know what I was going to do or how I was going to react to these situations that I found myself in. And it turns out that that form of expression gave me this like like I was I was able to express this like underlying like. I, I I don't want like to use the word villainous because I didn't feel like a villain in this story, but certainly like a nihilist with uh, what did I say? I was talking to somebody on uh, Instagram earlier. It was like a nihilist with a chip on my shoulder. You yeah, know, it was that's, like, that's good. That's I was good. like, nothing matters. You know, like you guys care way too much about all this stuff. I was like, just like kind of like really sassy and like ready for someone to like say the wrong thing to me, you know, and like <laughs> I'm expressing myself in that way. And that's not how I express myself in norm- my real life. You know what I mean? Like day to day interactions, I'm pleasant. And, you know, I, I like to call out the elephant in the room, you know, that I guess could maybe be something that you could maybe like a venn diagram version of that character to me but at the end of the day i literally expressed myself as someone that is me but that i didn't that i don't normally get to channel you know do you see where i'm going with this yeah totally no i i I haven't had that type of direct feedback um and that is really interesting so basically you kind of felt like you felt free enough to express yourself in ways that exist but you don't necessarily tap into on a day-to-day basis right. but that fantasy was set up and you kind of sensed like shit i can i can really t- i mean i'm always curious you know uh to to ask heroes like you know when do you first have that feeling of like oh actually i do feel like i have agency here like you know we it's easy to say you have agency and you know uh, i'm always curious like do we ha- do we have enough can we give them more so uh i'm kind of curious what when in the story did you kind of start to, to change your thinking like from like all right, i'm in this thing I've, I've i've done like the tutorial moment i kind of know what's going on and now like this gun works it and was I, and, like as soon as the story starts literally the very first moment because wow. i i i don't know when this happened to me but like i stopped trusting everything and like stop taking everything at face value a while ago especially in like my gaming experiences like a character runs up to me and they're like hey you know can you will you trade me this for that my first response is usually no i'm like what no no i don't trust you i don't know you you know what i mean so right away as soon as i spawned in i realized that like these were characters and people that i don't typically interact with and i was very cautious you know like the very first thing i did was not approach them I was like, there's a bunch of people around that fire. I'm not going over there. It was funny because they're all calling you over. Yeah, they're like, who's like, that over there? I'm like hiding behind like a, like a bush, you know? <laughs> like, So right away, I felt like I was able to like really have have agency over my actions. I was like, no, I'm not going to just walk up to these people. I don't know who they are. I don't know what they're going to do. And they pull some guns out on me, you know? So like instantly. And then, you know, characters would be like asking me questions, like personal questions. And I'm like, dude, like I just met you. You know, like, I'm not going to tell you that. 
you know i i, I had that in my in my like my my notes it said something like so we you know your the avatar that you wear has this mask in front of it uh because we try to make an avatar that's uh that's really easy for anybody to play so you know a guy or a girl or you know, it just leaves a lot of the character building up to the to the hero so that we don't lock into some physical attribute and so part of what we do um and it's kind of part of our like onboarding basically we're you know not every hero is uh necessarily as extroverted as you some are some are a little bit more timid so we have these kind of series of questions that we ask to try to get them to open up and loosen up and one of them of course is you know uh, why do you wear the mask and we tell you know you probably remember we, we sent you a little document that said we're going to ask you why you wear the mask so you know think about a reason and you didn't tell anybody you're like it's none of your business and that's yep. i have that in my notes it's like no man you don't get to know why i remember that was that's awesome man just yeah yeah and that's how i felt like being it's like dude who are you to ask me that you know like i was present you know like right. i was i was there thank you for saying that you know that word present is is presence is a word that comes up so much in uh in immersive vr uh and i teach vr to my to college students at brooklyn college and, and i try to get them to understand what presence is and and here's how i've always defined it. and i think it's a subjective definition i mean uh, you know at least f from my perspective on presence is um for me presence and immers in immersion kind of work together immersion for me is do i feel like the virtual space around me is real or believable even if it's like a fantasy surrealist uh, environment do I feel like it it's true like to me that's immersion like wow like I feel like I'm here then presence for me though is like the next level and for me presence is about am I recognized as a as a person in this space and for like a, a normal VR role-playing game with with animated uh, uh, NPCs with pre-recorded audio lines I never feel that presence at all like I, I might dig the other character but they don't recognize me they're fake I'm real their interactions are are one way they're scripted they're pre-recorded for me, it's the live actor who looks at me and, and talks to me in, in real time with natural language that makes me feel present. So hearing you say that you felt present uh, is a validation of something that I think I've worked really hard to, to create. So that's really cool to hear. So you guys you. nailed it. You guys nailed it. And, you know, the other thing, too, that's important, I think, to remember at this point in the conversation is that it's not just the hero that's there. Right. Like there are right. other people who are in the audience and by being in the audience, you're also kind of an acting, an active participant in the experience. So do you want to explain a little bit about how that works? Yeah, Jason? totally. So we have, um, we have one hero character uh, who uh, who you played. That this is the character that has the most agency. Um, this is the character who talks freely to the actors, and the actors talk back, and they're really the star of the show. But then we have up to about 15. Uh, we call them sidekicks. These are other audience members who are in the story as well. They wear these little tiny uh, avatars that are about this big. Uh, uh, we call them eye bots. They're like little little robot avatars with like a little eye. Um, and they, uh, like I said, they're silent uh, because we can't, we haven't quite figured out how to give agency to 15 people at once without it being super chaotic. So this is a learning process and we're slowly adding more and more agency with every iteration. So at this point, uh, we've got these sidekicks who are silent, um, but they wear these little avatars and they actually are role playing as well. Like we, we expect them to be in character as little iBots and we encourage that. And we give them little um, flashing lights. This is a, a fairly new mechanic for us within the last year or so. Uh, um, we didn't we didn't always have this, but now we've got this ability on the little iBot avatar uh, with their controllers. They can flash green as like good or yes or positive. They can flash red for like no or bad or warning. And then with both triggers, they can flash yellow, you know, somewhere in between. And what we've discovered, you know, we, we uh, I say something like, you know, there is no audience in Alien Rescue. It's a shared storytelling experience. Everybody is going along for for the mission together. And what we've discovered is that uh, the sidekicks, they love this experience. They don't, not everybody wants to be the hero. Not everybody is ready to kind of take the spotlight. Cause I bet, you know, maybe I'd, I'd like to ask you another question about, about uh, nervousness and how it feels to be the star. But I know for a fact that not everybody wants that position. Um, so these guys can fly around the scene where, you know, take it in kind of from wherever they want. But the, you know, the characters, you and the, and the other, the actors in the scene, they all will talk to the, to the, iBots and you know give them commands and we encourage you as the hero to kind of command this group of iBots who can go out and scout for you and, and be on the lookout for little hidden passageways 
or secret doors or little Easter eggs. Um, so in this way, you know, you, you, you have this group of people all going through the story together, and there is no just audience who's just sitting there watching. Like, everybody is participating. Um, and I think it just makes it so much more fun that way, you know? Totally. It was super fun. I loved interacting with my iBots. I felt like they were like, <laughs> I don't know, like they were like my little, like, my, like, min, like my minions or something, you know? I totally. was like, oh, totally. these are my guys. I'd like grab them, like, everybody get over here. I'm like, no, no, get over here, you know, like my little iBot friends. So I really loved them. And I was an iBot. And it yeah, was, it was pretty cool because I was, you know, I, you get to kind of take the story in kind of how you want. You get to fly ahead, kind of maybe peek around corners, come back and, and, and uh, tell the main character if there's danger up ahead or, you know, but, but you, you have to be, you have to kind of figure out how because you can't speak, right? So you got to go over and get in their face and blink your little lights and be like, oh, you know, danger, click, click, click. <laughs> or like, like wiggle around. We see people yeah. like, you know, wiggle their eyebots and then pop them around mm -hmm. and stuff like that, yeah. I yeah. would love to see, and I mean, I don't know how much of this feedback you like to get, but I would love to see, I think a way that the, that you could increase the interaction with the iBots is to give them abilities that either have a more, uh, like intense visual effect or an audio cue of some kind that is on a cooldown. you know, maybe it's like a three or a four minute cooldown, So that way you can't just like spam stuff, you know, and you like really have to be careful about like when you want to use like your alert or whatever. Mm -hmm. But if the iBots could like every five minutes, you were allowed to use like one, like beep, 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 beep. So I love that. That's tough though, because the lights on those little iBots aren't super obvious. So I found myself really trying to get your attention sometimes when I knew there was something bad that was happening. Right. And, uh, you know, you were immersed with the other actors and like talking and trying to figure things out yourself. Yeah. And I'm like flying around, trying to get in your face, blinking my, my head off. Right. What going, I'm saying oh, would fix there. that. Yeah. Because if you have like a, like a cool down ability that like is like a siren or something like, and then you can only use it once every five minutes. Like yeah. you'll wait till like, there's a thing you really want to get my attention. And then when I hear that iBot siren go off, I'm like, Oh, oh like a siren. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. So, yeah, like yeah. R2 so mm -hmm. I would, I would do it like a, uh, I've, I've thought about giving the iBots voices before. I never thought about the cool down. I'm going to take that idea actually. Please. Uh, oh, that's sweet. a brilliant idea because my, my, the reason why we haven't, um, so we, we, we constantly explore iBot agency because everybody wants more agency. So we're always looking at it. We have thought about um, voices. I was thinking like R2-D2 kind of chirps, but you know, whatever, some, some type of like, you know, droid sound. Yeah. Um, but I didn't go further because I didn't think about the cooldown. It's just such a, a good idea. There it is. Um, and you're right, um, Skeever, you're absolutely right that this is a problem that we have, which is um, the iBots will oftentimes be frantically signaling the hero and the hero is just too immersed in, there's because there's a lot going on. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not a slow moving affair. You know, it's a very fast paced show and we're constantly locomoting too. It's not like we stay in one spot for longer than a minute or two. We, we you know, we, the map is fucking huge. So we're constantly going and I know that the hero has got a lot on their mind, but this is an, an issue that has come up before Skiva, which is, you know, I, I want, if, if, if two iBots are madly flashing to get the hero's attention and the hero doesn't notice it, it's kind of a bummer for the iBot. It's like, it's mm -hmm. like, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, so, so this is actually an interesting solution to that. Um, Can't wait to see yeah. it. Hit me up when yeah. it's in. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to come as an yeah. well, so, You know, one of the cool things is because of how dynamic this whole experience is, you could go through this. 10, 15 times and, and always feel like something new and exciting is happening, depending on how you're feeling that day, depending on, mm -hmm. on you know, the type of character you want to play, right? The, the story can go so many different ways because you can, you can murder someone, you can like take someone out. There's characters trying to pull you in different directions. I would absolutely thing, do different right? things if I went back. Oh, for hero. sure, man. And, and, and from what I have seen, there is even a new uh, mode, right? Where you can have two heroes, which are kind of, yes. which are kind of both, you know, the main character at the same time, which is, which is really cool as well. One of the things that's kind of integral to the project, um, this is kind of, it's, it, it was born out of like research and investigation ideas. Like, you know, we did not just wake up one day as a group and think, you know what, we know what we're doing. Let's make Alien Rescue. This started, you know, years ago with mostly questions and no answers. And over time, we were able to answer some questions and, and put some interesting stuff together. But literally, the list of questions that, that we still have is very, very long. So experimental shows are 
baked into what we do. So I would say, you know, we run shows like two to three times a month, always on Saturdays. Um, and at least once a month, one of those shows is carved out as an experimental show. And in that, that's where we're going to try. I know the, one of the next things we're going to try is the is the talking iBots with the cool down. Um, but we started doing the two hero experience um, back in, in January. Um, that's been at the top of our list for uh, for a while for the obvious reasons, right? Let me get just, you know, how do you how do you keep a project like this sustainable over time um, if, you know, it costs X amount of money to kind of mount a production, but you can only bring in, you know, 16 people at a time. This is a, a constant battle for us to figure out how to keep this project sustainable. And so a second hero um, with that, you know, the hero ticket's 30 bucks. So if we can, if we can sell a second t hero ticket for another $30 um, and get two people together, two friends or, you know, a husband and wife or something, it's just an obvious choice. Um, but we didn't really know uh, how well or bad it would go. Um, but, you know, that's the safety of an experimental show. We just, just experiment and try it. Um, and uh, it works great, like really, really good. We had our first, I think our first pair was actually, um, do you guys know V-Bunny and yeah, Hambone? Yeah, I saw oh, yeah. 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 So they, they came through and did it as, and you know, their husband and wife in real life. And so they, they role played as husband and wife. It was so funny. Oh my <laughs> God. They were yelling at each other the whole time. And there was all <laughs> this mad confusion and chaos. And it, they were accusing each other of like, who killed the Skurks? It was you. No, it was you. Um, <laughs> so yeah. So long story short, the two hero thing really, really works. Um, I don't know if Alien Rescue can handle three or four heroes. Um, you know, at some point, there just might not be enough to do. The experience was not really built around multiple mm -hmm. heroes, so I'm not sure if we'll even try three or four um, on Alien Rescue. Um, also, I can see been... that coming unglued pretty quickly. Yeah. You know, like you yeah. get three yeah. dudes yeah. who are all friends in there together. They just start messing around yeah. and, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's what, and that's what we want to avoid. I really, that is the danger of, of uh, the danger of anything like this where you're trying, uh, you know, I really... I'm deeply interested in helping audiences, uh, myself included, suspend disbelief and really like buy into the scenario. I mean, when you think about like the, your favorite movies, uh, as fantastic as they might be, if it's truly your favorite movie, at some point you did literally suspend enough disbelief that you cried or you cared about a character and doing that in a, in a VR experience, I, I think is very, very hard. Um, and one of the problems with doing it with live role play, like we do is that there can be a tendency for role playing audiences to kind of meta the game a little bit, like to fall out of character. Oftentimes I think it's because they're a little bit nervous and they're, yeah. you know, not everybody spends all day role playing. And so when you role play, it could be, you could kind of feel a little bit awkward at first. Um, and part of the, the ice breaking of that, which I think is a natural human behavior is to maybe go a little bit meta and, and drop in a comment that really doesn't belong it, it, from the character would never say that that doesn't really belong in the story, but it makes the, makes the audience member feel like empowered a little bit, like, you know, haha, I can make a joke about or social less media, vulnerable. I can make a joke about Trump, or I can make a joke about, you know, whatever. This stuff I hate. I really, it's not part of the mission of this project. And we really do try to, like, set up uh, an environment so that we encourage deep role play and discourage that kind of stuff. But it's not mm -hmm. easy, man. Dude, it's about, yeah. it's about vulnerability. Like in order to really experience this and enjoy it, you need to be vulnerable and like allow yourself to feel something, you know, and to pretend and to play, you know, which is ultimately what you're asking people to do is something that might make some people feel insanely vulnerable doing. So what are totally. they going to do? They're going to go into their comfort zone and crack a joke about yep. Beyonce or something. Mm -hmm. right. Um, you know, you know to, go ahead, Skiva. Oh, I was going to say, to so go back to kind of one of the things you said earlier was, was, you know, about a husband and a wife kind of doing this whole thing. And when I was, when I was in this, I just kept thinking to myself, wow, like back in the day, you know, you'd look at your spouse or your, your girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever. And you'd be like, Hey, you know, let's go to the movies. Let's go to the theater, like whatever. But to actually go and participate in it. Right let's let's put on a headset and go be the character let's enter this environment and actually go and be the person that's the story like i just saw the future when when i was in this i mean i i can't imagine a cooler date night right than to go together into something like this and bond together as you're as you're going through a spaceship or or this you know parts of this alien planet and you're trying to figure out this mystery and how to get through this thing and who's doing what and like 
and really be able to kind of play off each other in your relationship. And I just, oh man, I just, I truly saw the future when I was in this. Same. And, and, and for real, like for real, Gosh. man, this is wow. really, this is something else. And I, and I think people out there that, you know, that maybe, you know, both people in your relationship are into VR, do this immediately. Go do this. <laughs> so you could have a great time. So here's here's another something for you, Jason. And I think that, you know, I hope you, that you will like this as much as I'm liking it as I'm thinking about it. But I think where the discomfort from being the hero, right? I heard you mention, kind of bring that up a little bit earlier. Um, you know, what can be done to alleviate some of those feelings of vulnerability as you're like forging a backstory, right? It was the backstory aspect of the experience that I found to be immersion breaking because I had to lie to myself about this, you know, like I didn't come from some planet, you know, like I didn't do any of that stuff. So for me to pretend like I was doing that made me feel a little silly. You know, wow. so I kind of went into this space of like, you know, no one knows anything about me, not even me, you know, and I'm taking all of these experiences at face value. So if you can start a story that like has like a person put a headset on and like then everything starts happening to them, like they don't know what's happening, you know, and like they're trying to figure it out as they go. Kind of like one of those movies that like starts at the end and then like goes backwards or something, you know, yeah. like it might help people. um I don't know, like alleviate some of that, like pretending that they have to do in order to get into the character and rest more on like what's naturally what they would naturally do or, or feel because they don't know what's happening to them. You know, like the story is unfolding for them as they go. This and this is the challenge of the project because everybody is so different, mm -hmm. Alex. We mm -hmm. used to do that. We used to do no backstory at all. We just plopped people in just like you said. And the feedback was this was back in 2020 um, when we had about half of the show done. We, we were we up to like the Bob, the slug monster scene is what we had done. And we got invited to go to Venice, the Venice International Film Festival. Sweet. This was like this was like, you know, winning the lottery. Uh, yeah, we'll just, go. We, that just it doesn't happen. Happen, you know, um, so we go and we do this thing as as a work in progress. We just had the first half, um, and we had never uh, done a, a bunch of shows together. We had, you know, we had had people come through in rehearsals, but we'd never done like real formal shows with with audiences. And we did like 20 shows in in two weeks. So we we had a lot of iteration and a lot of 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 of, of uh, close contact with with the heroes and with the with the uh, sidekicks and stuff. Um, and overwhelmingly, I would try to debrief as many as I could, and I, I got a lot of feedback uh, that centered around nervousness and um, and feeling anxious about being the hero. And the feedback that I got back then in 2020 was, um, it's all coming at me so quickly, I wish I had some time to prepare. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we took all that feedback and and put this mission briefing document together and and you know are trying to get it that way. But the the fact of the matter is is that everybody is different. Every every hero is different. Every buddy is different, right? We all play games differently. We all we all need different things. And so this is the challenge: is how do I accommodate? you know, a guy like you who really, you know, doesn't want that stuff, who wants this set of things over here. Mm -hmm. And, but I got another person over here and I don't know them ahead of time. This is a great challenge for me. I, I, I'm, I'm calling on you guys both now to, to brainstorm with me for the next couple of minutes on if you, you know that you've got, let's say 10 different personality types ranging from hyper extroverted to really introverted, but still wants the hero ticket for whatever reason. You've got people who have role-playing experience, who love crafting characters. You've got other people who, you know, feel a little bit silly about making up a backstory that doesn't make sense to them. And so how does, how do we as a cast, as a, as a, as a group, how do we, how do we make sure that we, you know, that we do our best at least to to put you guys in the right lane? Is it a that's, is it a questionnaire a question. that I give beforehand? Like, that's a good idea. That is a good idea. That's that was mm -hmm. where my brain immediately went. Same was like Same. a questionnaire. It's like, hey, like how a, much of your backstory do you want to yeah. be told? How much of it do you want to make up? You know, do you want your character to have any previous memories of these experiences? Do you want do you want to know who you're cutting like stuff yeah. like that? But know? make it short. 
maybe five questions where you can really gauge what's yeah, happening. Because for me, idea. I want the backstory, right? And just like you were saying, everyone's different. Everyone wants to do this, Wait, this so, stuff different. But hold on, though. Like, if I mm -hmm. asked you, like, okay, so tell me what planet you're from and mm -hmm. why you wear the mask. Mm -hmm. You would have fun coming up with the name um, of the planet? Not, uh, maybe not on the fly. If I knew, if I maybe if I knew those were questions I was going to get off uh, okay. you, get that, you get ahead well, you of time. You get that email like right. you know a week yeah. or so before, so, so you right. have time. Assuming right. that you have True. time, you yeah. you're telling me that it's it sounds fun and it does to you to come yeah. up with the name of a planet yep. and some reason why you wear the mask. Totally, yeah. just just like I I kind of role play in my in my own mind why I really why I really enjoy games like No Man's Sky, right? It's like I feel like I'm I'm this character that's flying from planet to planet, exploring the galaxy, and I have this maybe I have this past on on some other planet. Like to me, that's 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 super fun, right? So to me, that would be a really cool part. But and I think you can definitely figure that. Well, first of all, you do send out that email, and it does give you some of those details. But being able to kind of maybe answer a couple of questions right after you buy the tickets or right before you buy the tickets, that you can gauge if the person is extroverted or introverted, if they if their shyness levels, right? And and then maybe um, kind of tailor the experience a little a little bit, right? I mean, the actors would kind of know what they're kind of getting yeah. into with the with the character. It, actually, it would, it would help the actors mm -hmm. quite a bit. We we spend a lot of effort and energy in the first 20 minutes trying to actively diagnose the hero. Right. So because we know we we know from experience that there's lots of different types of people who who come through these shows, and so our we're we're desperately we're all like on pins and needles almost to figure out like where on the spectrum is this hero? What types of stuff are they going to want to do? Um, so any information that we get beforehand from you guys who are going to come through uh, just helps us make that experience even better. So I'm feeling, and this is, I'm so glad that you brought this up, Alex, because I think this is an aspect of this project that I never really thought hard enough about. Um, and that is comfort level. I, I guess because, you know, there hasn't been like when, when I think of role playing, I immediately just think of like D and D, in a group role playing, I think of D and D, and I think of it's uh, usually a fairly close knit group of friends who feel comfortable with with each other, and you're not putting somebody on the spot. Like Alien Rescue does, kind of put you on the spot, and I feel like there's tension there. There's like you get there's attention that the hero is getting from all the people, all the sidekicks are watching you, mm -hmm. the cast are watching you. I know there must be feelings of like, I don't want to fuck this up, I I don't want to look dumb, I don't want to look stupid. Um, so I know that we've got this these. Uh, behavioral issues that we and we have not we're like this far into the into the journey of of discovering this so this kind of conversation is super helpful and i i want to follow up alex what what other um sensations of kind of nerves or anxiety uh did you experience and would you have any further suggestions on how to make it smoother because we want it to be f i mean i want it to be fun from like as soon as possible like a little bit of nerves is okay but not to the point where like you're wondering like ah, do i did i did i regret buying this ticket like right. I don't, you know no what, so what, i'm gonna start by saying me? i absolutely loved this right like i rave right. about my experience in there so everything that i'm gonna go into with you on this is like hair splitting kind of situation no you know we need saying? it though we need it so yeah. to me i um, those probing questions that came from lizard breath rubbed me the wrong way <laughs> from the character, you know, like oh, I Jello. didn't like how he was like just coming up to me out of the blue, like trying to pull me away from the other people and then starts like grilling me about like what kind of guy I am. Am I the kind of guy who goes in guns? Up? I'm like, dude, why don't you mind your own business? You know, like I didn't want to, I didn't want to have that conversation with him. You know what I mean? So I, it caused me to not like that character very much. Was that, that's do not, you think that's more, more of your mindset uh, on the character you kind of decided to be? I didn't, well, I didn't really decide anything. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like, I was just there and all of a sudden he's yeah. like, Hey, so tell me what, what's your fighting style? Like anyway, I'm like, man, shut up. I'm like, leave me alone. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> You're like, do you know who I am? No, like start somewhere else, you know, like, <laughs> so he rubbed me the wrong way a little bit and I ended up like, you know, I don't know. I don't want to say resentful, you didn't blast him. I know. Well, you know, I'm not crazy. <laughs> All right. I'm not a trigger happy psychopath. Although Whoa, maybe a little, bit, a little bit, maybe a little <laughs> My bit. My notes say you blasted everything in sight, including the extra qual that we threw at you. So. Yeah, I did kill <laughs> a lot of stuff. A hair trigger. Well, and I found that there was a scientist guy and like, you don't know whether or not he's good or bad. And he just, oh, he, did, he made him. a quick move and I didn't like <laughs> it, you know? <laughs> 
it is what it is, you know. Right. But, but right. anyway, you know. But you're not the first. But you're not the first one that has said that they don't like the questions or they find they find it, you know, too probing. Um, but again, for every for every person that tells us that, we've got somebody else that says, "Oh my God, I loved all that." Like. You know, ask me more. Let me. We have people who go on to like monologues about their character, like they've built full blown wow. backstories. And if we give them an inch, it's like we all just sit back and just watch them go. So this is our, our challenge: is how do we accommodate these different play styles? You know, well, you, I'm not a game. You already developer. are. I, I, like, let's let's be real. You already are. Like, maybe it's yeah, not doing, perfect right. for me or perfect right. for them, but both right. of us got the experience that we went in right. there for straight up. Right. So, like I said, everything right. that we're doing now is splitting hairs. We're like, how do right. we refine this? Like, how do we make this right. without any issue? You know, <laughs> like it's pretty close to without issue for the mm -hmm. most part, which I think is a decent segue into talking about the platform. Like, let's talk mm -hmm. a little bit about where this game is exists or this experience it's exists and why it exists there and i'll let you start it off oh my god i mean i could talk about neos all day so um <laughs> we do so yeah so you know if we go back in time a little bit uh like i said this project has been going on since uh about 2017 or so is when i first started uh, the meta movie wow. project and no way hold on uh, so it's been five years yeah, started in. Uh, I'm wow. looking at. It, I just, I made a note to myself because I thought this would come up. Um, and thank you to Nicole who helped me put this timeline together because we've we've been working on it for so long. It's 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 crazy. So January 2017, um, I started working wow. on the first iteration of this project, which was a, a 15 minute sketch. It wasn't. It didn't even have an ending. It was like the first act of something. Maybe um, it was called a very old mystery in New. It was like a Sherlock Holmesian detective story, um, and I built it and ran it on the high fidelity social VR platform created by uh, Philip Rosedale. Um, this was the only uh, social VR platform that I was really aware of. 2017, um, and it was it was it was one that gave me some crude. I don't want to say crude. It gave me some abilities to to, to do some. Um, uh, in-game world building uh, before I had uh, like a dev team to, to start making stuff with me. I could build my own little street scene or something over there. Uh, and we ran, uh, I ran two iterations of this project in high fidelity from 2017 to 2018. It was a very old mystery. And then um, we kind of learned what we wanted to learn on that one. I put it down to go make a, a short film. And I came back about eight months later to start the second version of this project called The Heist. Uh, obviously, you know, each project, each version was a little bit more ambitious than the last, building on what we learned. Uh, the the run times got a little bit longer. The cast got bigger. The uh, the agency of the of the heroes and sidekicks got you know were were, were increasing. Um, and then uh, you know, unfortunately, as anybody who is into the social VR scene knows, uh, High Fidelity basically ran out of investment money um, and they closed up shop. Um, and this was right. I was kind of, I was on fire, you know, in my own like learning and, and research really well. Um, and we had, you know, a nice community of people in high fidelity who uh, helped us on the project and were supportive. Um, and I just thought like, wow, we're going to be in high fidelity for the next unknown years and this platform is going to really take off and uh and we'll just keep iterating and then the news came out that uh, that they had lost their fund or they run out of their money basically um and so we had to start looking around for for what to do next because i was like i said i was in the zone and i was ready to i was ready for alien rescue but i i now didn't have a home so um i took a couple of months and i just went platform hopping uh, with a couple of friends, a couple of people on the project. And we looked uh, at all the popular social VR platforms that were available. Um, this is like uh, at the end of 2019. Mm -hmm. um, so of course we went over to VR chat and, and there's you know so much amazing stuff happening over in VR chat. We met with uh, a bunch of devs over there and just looked at the, with kind of the engine, what was possible. And that was definitely a, a big contender. We went over to Sansar, which was still pretty jumping in 2019. Sansar was like kind of still on their, they were moving ahead uh, quite well. They had gotten a bunch of uh, of really high profile developers making some really cool places. I'll remember Skurrix Island uh, for, for, forever. It was really uh, quite immersive. Um, and so we checked out that. We went over to... Um, Sansar, what else did we look at? Well, and then we looked at Neos. And once we looked at Neos, it was like, oh, 
wait a minute, <laughs> what is going on here? And again, this is, you know, this is, Niels has been around for a while now, but this was still, there wasn't, I think there was like 20 users a day in Neos when we, when we popped over there. And, um, and, you know, the first group of people that I met over there, it was Nexalon and Aegis. Uh, and of course, I had Alternique, uh, who was my avatar designer from the High Fidelity. Um, and I remember this session that we had. It was like a two-hour session where Next just kind of gave us the tour and, and talked about the platform. And I talked a little bit about the project and what, what we were looking for. And honestly, man, um, one of the main goals that I had for Alien Rescue was I wanted really, really detailed avatars. Like I just wanted, I, I didn't want kind of that cartoony, flat, tune uh anime style like that's a fine style but for me i'm i'm more interested in photorealism uh I, I want things that have like a high degree of detail with uh with uh you know uh, bones and and moving stuff and uh, textures and hair and stuff and, and so i turned to to Ultranik, my avatar designer and, and he had hopped with me in all these different worlds and i said look you know we've seen these worlds every every platform has their pluses and their minuses, their, their pros and their cons. Um, Niels definitely was really small compared to VR chat. And that was like a big deal because for a project like this, we rely on audiences. Um, and so, you know, had we developed in VR chat, there was a lot more potential audiences. Um, but I asked Ultranic, I said, listen, man, I, you, your task is to build me the absolute most progressive avatars that you are, that you can possibly make. Um, and he's a good avatar designer. So he's an I wanted him to have the tool set, and he looked at me and he was like, "It's got to be Neos." And I'm like, "Well, can you explain to me why? I'm not a dev. I'm a, my background is a traditional filmmaker, so I can I can collaborate with all sorts of creative types, but I don't code. And I, my my knowledge of, of 3D model making, and certainly my knowledge of avatar design, is is pretty limited." Um, so he explained to me that essentially um, the the way that the the Fuchs engine, this is the the engine that drives Neos, the way it's 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 constructed allows a, a designer like himself a lot of flexibility in terms of file types, in terms of um, you know uh, how how many bones he can animate, uh, in terms of how the IK works, uh, and he was like, you know, I can do good work in VR Chat, and he's like, I can do really really good work in Neos, uh, and that was a really important thing for me, like have, knowing that one of the goals that I had was really only going to be able to be achieved in Neos was was like started to tip the scales. And then having hung out with these guys with Nex and Aegis and and Rue and, and some others, um, they were just all so smart and so creative. And when I told them more about the project, I, I gave them like a, a one hour pitch where I where I told them about the story and I talked them through the synopsis and I showed them visual references because I wanted to see like, you know, am I going to get some some support over here? Because I, I was, my goal was to, I had done a, a Kickstarter and I had about 10,000 bucks. And so I was looking to like, where am I going to spend this money and, and what devs am I going to work with? This group of, of Neosians were so friendly and so cool and just so excited and hype on the project that then I was like, okay, so I can do my avatars here and I've got this group of people who are really, who are into it and, and get what I want to do. Um, and then the last thing was they showed me how the real-time collaboration stuff works. And once I understood that my workflow could be massively enhanced by choosing this platform, that sealed the deal. You know, in high fidelity or, or in VR chat or just about any other platform, my progress uh, was, you know, show visual references to my development team. This is what we want. This is what we're trying to build for, for a very old mystery. It was a, a, like a futuristic New York scene. Heist, it was uh, another kind of futuristic. Uh, so, you know, you show, your, you show your dev team your visual references, and then you go away and you wait for like two months and they come back to you having built everything in Unity and baked it all together and uploaded to the platform. And they're like, this is what we've made. And you're like, oh, <laughs> that's... That's not what I asked for. No, 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 no. You got, you got all the notes totally wrong. Like that, you're looking around, you're like, and this is the process for any director working with the design team. Like, you know, you're, you're most likely not going to get what you wanted in that first iteration because, you know, the, just how, how communication works. So, and so in High Fidelity, I, would, I had a really lovely dev, and I, I looked around, and I'm like, oh, no. Like, we're so far away from where I want to be. So here's your laundry list of, like, the 20 things that I would really appreciate if you could kind of try to, to address. And, you know, these are lists that are typed out. On, on an email or something and so then it's like bye i'll see you in two months and then they come back in two more months and they're like okay i've addressed all your notes and you're like 
no, no, you didn't. No, yeah. those are so. <laughs> in in Neos, of course, that doesn't it doesn't work like that. In Neos, you can you can build right inside Neos. Sure, you can build stuff in Blender, you can build stuff in Unity and import it. But the the power of the collaborative real time. Um, engine means that when they bring in that first draft and you look at it and you're like, oh, no, we need to make some changes, you can just start making those changes, like right then and right there. Right. Once, once, I, once I was aware that that was possible, it was like, it's a no-brainer, and, right. and I've never looked back. And, you know, from the perspective of an audience member, there are things that happen in Neos that just cannot happen in other in other platforms like there's a part in alien rescue where one of the characters is displaced like you're walking next to a character and then they get displaced by something that happens during the story and it's like they were there and now they're not and i watched them go from that place to the other one and i'm like oh my gosh like like that was so cool like that was like one of my favorite parts of the whole thing because Me it's too. like you don't you don't realize that that's a possibility you know, and then you see it happen and you're like, whoa, like this is a living, breathing world. And all of these avatars are really in it and they're really a part of it. So, you yeah. know, from an audience member standpoint, you know, I can see why Neos would be the perfect platform because there's just so much interaction that can happen there that you can't do in VR chat or, or otherwise. And I can definitely wanted... see this as well. Now, anyone that knows me or has ever listened to me talk about anything knows that I am a huge fan of Neos for so many different reasons. For all the reasons you're talking about, being able to collaboratively um, go in there and make changes on the fly, do everything on the fly. There's no reason to go out into Unity and have to wait and come back. No, do it right then and there with everyone in the room and let everyone click on that inspector window and, oh, no, no, hold on, click this. Go. Why don't you make a tweak here or do this? And then everyone can work together and it's an amazing, amazing tool. Um, it is by far, I think, the most advanced social um, VR network that there is, um, but by far. And some of the things you were saying too about how you went in there and all of the people in there were so smart, right? Now, I am not saying anything bad about anything with VR chat, Rec Room. I love all of these platforms. I really and truly do. But I find that, that Neos brings a certain type of person into it. And the type of people that I go in there and I interact with are very intelligent people. Mm -hmm. They they think on a level, um, a, a lot of these people that that I have never, I that, that it's, it's it, you don't really see in other platforms. You know, people go into other platforms like VR chat, like kids and stuff, and they go in there to mess around and, and just chat with people. But people in Neos are there to like make things and make amazing things happen and, and do things that you just can't do anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And I'm just a huge, huge advocate of this platform, um, no matter how drama full right. it is right how, now. <laughs> how, like how can, like how, familiar are you with this controversy that's surrounding neos currently jason like are you able to explain any of it to to us in our audience and tell us how I you mean, feel I'm, about it I'm, I'm 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 unfortunately familiar with it because i'm a part of the community um and you know it's been i think the the best way that i've seen it stated before it's kind of like watching your parents break up you know yeah. it's like the you know the two founders are have come to a point they've worked together for years um they have you know I don't know any. I don't know any inside information at all. I I I think it's kind of uh, uh, not cool to to kind of poke your nose around in their business. I mean, I know we're all curious, but like these are two old friends who started this thing together with the best of intentions, and for many years, I I believe I'm not 100 percent sure, but I feel like for many years they had a good collaborative working agreement, and now they've come to some type of crossroads. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Is it over inside? management style is it over uh, you know personal personality differences i honestly don't know but there it's 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 not news to anybody that these guys are are you know want to move their their separate ways and that is you know highly disruptive to the community because kind of all of the development has stopped and you know there's all this infighting and all this you know uh, drama around the the breakup of our of our parents basically so number 1 it's just it's just i feel bad for them like this is something that they both worked really really hard on and watching it uh watching them have to deal with how to kind of extricate themselves from this thing that they made together is heartbreaking um and i just you know i uh, I, I know them both. I don't know them. They're not like, we're not friends, but I, I know them, you know, enough because I've interacted with them on Neos. And, um, and I just, you know, I, 
uh, it just it's a bummer you know that's the biggest problem is it's a, it is a bummer uh, and you know certainly for a guy like me who is you know i'm i'm out here promoting this platform i'm trying to get people into the platform uh, i b deeply believe in this in this community and in the power of this engine and i i think neos can go on to be a uh, a really important uh, counterweight to places like uh, Meta and Horizons. Like, you know, Neos is kind of the anti-Horizon. It's the anti-Meta. It definitely um, is. It, the, the, the values, even though the, the, the founders are splitting, I think the, the values that certainly I know that Fruks has and that the community has are all the types of values that you want in a in a VR platform. Uh, you know, highly respectful of your privacy. Nobody's interested in mining your fucking data. You know, they they they're trying to you know do good by their platform. So um, I think that it's important for Neos actually to to stay afloat. You know, these guys are not funded uh, by VC money. They they're 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 trying to they're trying to be funded by their community. And I think um, this type of of space as you know as all these little mini metaverse pop up which which i hope that this will be the model i'm i'm not a big fan of some you know conglomerate metaverse that is all in one like like we see in ready player one or in snow crash i i would like a version that's more like reality that we know like here's london and here's paris and you go to vr chat and it's got a it's got a different culture and a vibe than than rec room but all those places are are really important and i think neos as a as as an independent platform that is uh, kind of built around its user base and and funded mostly by its user base um is is can't, we can't let something like that go. So, uh, you know, my hope at this point is that the the founders are able to uh, amicably resolve their issues, that um, Neos can get back to uh, in in a development stage, that can get back into a growth stage, um, and hopefully we can you know we can try to put some of this drama behind us. But you know, people people do like drama. So, right. well, I mean, you've got yeah. so much invested in this platform. You know, like so much. I mean, you guys like you basically exist as you currently do because of neos you know totally. I mean, you're 100%. watching all of this stuff unfold like are you like sweating a little bit like you gotta sure, be of course a little I bit am. oh my god yes i mean um I, you know so i have been I, I was in high fidelity and and i was on that ship when it kind of went down and that sucked you know and and having to find was like that was a whole process and it was sad to leave community behind and, and get on a neo so i've been there before like i conceptually i can wrap my head around like okay we're gonna have to just get the get the whole circus fold the tent up <laughs> load up the carts you know put the harnesses on the elephant and take the circus to a new town so conceptually you know intellectually i can i i can deal with that but um the meta movie or the alien rescue would never exist without neos not even close and not just the engine it's the people too by the way like the 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 dev team the people who actively are working on the neos platform were part of my team like you know before Neos kind of got bigger as i was there and so my original dev team went on to continue building like neo stuff when i was there they were the, the graciously like uh, fruits was was quite gracious to kind of let some of his guys work on alien rescue so it's it's a very um real thing when i say that neos built alien rescue it's yeah, absolutely the truth but even beyond that like you know uh even if i was like callous and and just business oriented and just thinking about what's best for me which i'm absolutely not i could never i mean i, I only want to do bigger and better than alien rescue i don't want to go smaller and simpler than alien rescue mm -hmm. like I, I i like building at scale i like the fact that we have these huge maps and our show is 70 minutes long we've got you know all the stuff going on if I took, were to take this project to another platform, I would be going like back in, t like, I can't go back to not having real-time collaboration. I can't go back to not letting an avatar get, you know, grabbed by something. And like, I, I'm not, I'm not willing to do that. So I'm, I'm going to ride. First of all, I truly do believe that we are in a, a hiccup moment and that it will get resolved. It might not happen overnight, um, but I, I know that both parties want ultimately what's best for neos and I, I believe that even if they're having issues themselves i do think this will ultimately get resolved will neos continue to thrive and prosper or will it die nobody knows that nobody knows that doesn't nobody can predict what's going to happen in the in the metaverse in the next five years so i i don't really know but um but you're absolutely right that i that this project is is very like welded to neos um and that's fine. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be in Neos until I can't be anymore. Until either 
I'm old and, and gray and retire or until uh, Neo it doesn't exist anymore for whatever reason. But um, yeah, it's I'm definitely sweating though, a yeah. little bit. Yeah, for I'm, sure. I'm I kind mean, of curious I'm all, about. So yeah. I, you know, I, I love Neos more than anything. So I, the way I feel about Neos is exactly how I feel about VR. I see so much potential in virtual reality as a whole. And Neos is the thing that I think has the most potential out of anything I've ever seen in virtual reality. And that's not a light thing for me to say. There's a lot of amazing things out there. VR has changed my life in so many different ways. I mean, I am nothing in my existence is the same as it was pre VR, like nothing. And it's um, this, this project Neos to me is, is everything. So I don't want to see it go anywhere. I don't want to see you go anywhere away from Neos, but I am curious. Um, I'm sure you know that you could probably have sell a lot more tickets if you were on something like a native quest app, right? So kind of what are your, what are your feelings about that? Have you considered, um, building a version of this or, or, or maybe a different story somewhere else that you could kind of, kind of pluck from the audience that isn't currently able to uh to hop in and experience something like alien rescue which is currently only available in neos mm -hmm. yeah it's a great question i think about it all the time i mean the <sighs> There's so many challenges to a project like this and sustainability, meaning, you know, can we afford to keep it going is at the crux of the of the hardest part about this project. This is a completely independent project. We don't have investors yet. I'm, I'm trying to to create a business plan and a, and a pitch deck that will be attractive to investors. But at the moment, um, I ran a, a ten thousand dollar Kickstarter back in um, 2019 and we ran out of that money. So, um, you know, my my day job is I teach I'm a professional professor at a college in Brooklyn, and I teach VR, and I teach filmmaking, and I fund this project on whatever is left over from my paycheck, which, you know, as a city college professor, it ain't that much. Yeah. Um, so, so thinking strategically about stuff like Quest or about stuff like VR chat with a b bigger audience, I think about it like all day, every single day. Um, and so, so here's my response. Um, I would love it if at some point Neos would develop a version of Neos for the Quest, which is not on their on the top of their list on their roadmap. Um, for me, that would be amazing. If if uh, if Neos would come up with a with a Quest version, I would definitely develop something for the Quest. But I I would only do it I think in Neos because I feel like Neos could do it properly. I you know I, I see a lot of great work that is done on the Quest and even though it would have to be a scaled down version of a meta movie, it couldn't be it couldn't be the type of map that we load up uh, in 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 Neos in, in a PC VR environment. It would have to be scaled back. Um, but if it could if it could have all the different um, qualities of what the Neos engine brings, then it would be a no brainer for me. I would find a way. I would I would take it alone. Basically, I would just figure it out. I would I would develop some some smaller side quest version of Alien Rescue, a little side mission or something like that that was kind of compatible for Quest. Um, and I would still continue building. I I I. I I am in the PC VR camp because I like big and I like ambitious. Um, so I'm never going to stop. I'm not going to just pivot this entire project to cater to the quest. That doesn't interest me personally. Um, and that is ultimately what drives this project is what is going to engage me as an artist, like on a creative level. Mm -hmm. um, so I would, but I would do both. I would like, I would develop the next, iter the next kind of the next alien rescue on the larger scale, the 70 minute scale with, with, you know, uh, beautiful immersive maps. But then I would find a way to, to simultaneously either either scale down uh, Alien Rescue as we have it now and pull out some of the maps and make it smaller or, or do some other thing like that. Um, well, you know but, what may happen sooner is the a standalone hardware might come out that will just run yes. Neos, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, that's yes. what I'm hoping for. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm hoping yeah, for. Or, or, what, what do you, what do mm -hmm. you guys think? You, you guys are, are much more knowledgeable than me on um, stuff like... Uh, uh, headset development and 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 kind of platform development. So, is it? Do you can can you imagine in the future whether it's like I don't know the Steam Deck plus whatever Valve is working on? Like, do you think like, or or is it going to be as you just said, it, Alex? Is it going to be some new standalone headset that is wireless? It's not super expensive. Um, but you know, I don't know. Like, what, I'm I'm curious for your take. Like, you know what my goals are. You've just heard me say. So you you tell me from your expert opinion what is my best what's my best strategy here well, I'm not leaving the 
Before and I, Skiva and I answers this, the quest. <laughs> before Skiva answers this, we want to throw a quick shout out to our buddy Bluebell here in the chat who has given us a four dollar and ninety nine super chat donation. Hey. Says great guest and show. What? Yep, that's great guest. I mean, you heard it here straight out of the chat. So good job, Jason. Awesome. You're you're doing great. Um, and he also wants to know: Is Neo secure? Hmm. I mean, I I'm not a dev. I I I. I I think, I mean, I'm even not sure quite how to answer that question. Um, well, you don't have you know, to. You can say, listen, dude, I'm not answering that question. <laughs> right? I don't care listen, how much dude, you donate. I, I can't answer that question. Because, um, <laughs> I mean, security is on, uh, security is is a big question. Um, I mean, the, what I think about when I think about security is maybe not what, what your what your uh, your caller or your guest is talking about. For me, the conversations around security are ones that I've witnessed and I've, I've listened to with great curiosity. That's about um, like authentication of digital goods in a marketplace. Um, and High Fidelity really wrestled with this. It was so interesting. So High Fidelity uh, was so progressive. This is back in literally in like 2018. They had a currency that wasn't, it wasn't crypto. They didn't call it crypto, but it was based on the blockchain. It was High Fidelity credits. They made a bank. You could go into the bank. You had to make an appointment with a banker. Wow. But you could go into the bank and you could you could connect your PayPal to High Fidelity. You could basically buy High Fidelity bucks. So that was pretty progressive. 2018. They also had a store. They came out with a store where uh, you know 3D model makers and avatar designers and world builders could put their assets up on the store and actually sell them kind of high fidelity bucks. So they were they were doing um, in-game uh, economy and marketplaces, which from what I understand, most social VR platforms, most metaverses, this is a core component of a successful metaverse, right? Is, is to be able to give your content creators the ability to monetize their work. This just exponentially grows the platform. It makes a, a really healthy ecosystem of buyers and sellers. And the big problem around this seems to be um, authenticating this stuff because it's so easy to kind of, you know, you hear about VR chat, you can rip avatars or, uh, and even high fidelity, you know, the, the hardcore hackers were immediately exploiting the weaknesses of the store and pointing out like it doesn't really actually work. Like it's too easy to rip these assets off. Um, so when I think of security, that's what comes to mind is like, you know, how secure is like the marketplace and Neos doesn't have a marketplace yet. Uh, I know it's on their GitHub roadmap and I know that like making the authentication system of any digital asset, that is the priority. That's the only way that you make a store that people trust, that, that, that sellers trust, right? That your content creators trust is they, they want to know that if they put their avatar that they've worked for two months on and they're selling for bucks they want to know that on that store it can't be hacked and, and stolen mm -hmm. um i i don't know i mean so neos doesn't have that yet but um no they just have I, a cryptocurrency that d drops by 99 percent in its value <laughs> invest in it <laughs> well but here's the deal though story. Ne neos does have protection um that you can implement into any item any avatar um that is user-based um, that you can add only this only the users that you want to be able to have access to to different types of assets right so there is a, there's a lot of security things in place before my vr days i was a cyber security guy i had an it company wow. and um here the 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 way to make things the most secure is to be on a small platform, right? Because because the attention of the hackers and the smart people isn't looking where the fewer people are. They're looking at platforms like VR Chat and like Rec Room, right? And that's why Apple originally didn't have as many security problems. It was built on a very a very strong platform. It was built on Unix and it's, it's definitely had an upper hand. But once once Apple and, and their computers started selling better, then the viruses came, then the hacking came because now there was a viable uh, pool of people to hack and there was enough yeah, information to time. make it look appealing, right? And the same thing is going to happen with Neos. We're not going to know how secure this platform is until enough people are in there uh, for people to want to come over and mess stuff up. Um, that's right. the only way we're going to tell. As of right now, it looks and feels pretty secure. There's a lot of things I can do to secure the items that I want secured, um, to secure my account. Um, I feel like my Neos credits are somewhat protected. But once it gets VR chat numbers, is when we're going to find out. We're not going to know until then because we don't have so, access to the code. So really, it's so. not as secure as one day it will be. 
because right. uh, <laughs> someone's obvious they will break it. <laughs> right. But you know? but here's the right. thing with Neos: the people in there are so freaking smart. It's ridiculous. The people building the platform are so smart. It's ridiculous. So we have a pretty good chance of this becoming a very secure platform because as things happen, these ultra smart people are finding out ways around it, ways around to make it better and make mm -hmm. it more solid and more secure. And if anyone can come up with a platform that would be the most secure, it's the people in the mines that are currently working on Neos and the people that are using it currently. I would not want to put my computer skills and my code skills and my hacking skills up against any of these people. Right. Right. right, because they are very, very smart people. But again, we don't. I don't have access to the code. No one has access to the source code. This isn't an open source platform, which is kind of a bummer. But it's not an open source platform, so there's no way to really tell how secure it is. You know, I mean, we'll 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 find out with time, so, assuming the platform. Survives. So what needs to happen then? It needs to land needs on to on standalone devices. That's right. what needs to happen. So right. now to bring it back. Is this what what should Jason be looking at? Should he be looking at a Quest Three standalone device or like a like well, a hybrid like mini backpack, but it's not a backpack? I'll, I'll like tell you now. that currently there is a Quest build. Um, you can access it if you're a Patreon of a certain tier, um, but their focus is on the PC right now. So the Quest build gets very minor updates at a very much a, a much smaller you know incremental process than than the PC build does. I think what they're waiting for is for the mobile chips to get more powerful and just stronger. And and the XR2 chip is very, very powerful. The problem with the XR2 chip is that it, it runs hot, right? Just like any chip. And so you have to be able to cool it properly for this to happen. Um, the things I've heard about the Cambria, the Meta's new headset that, that should be coming later, is that it has... Ha, it has ramped up the processing speed and it has solved some of the cooling problems that have that are happening in the quest therefore it can run a lot faster uh with with less um, thermal issues right so as we move forward with some of these headsets we're going to see some of these manufacturers that have been working in research and development and, and trying to make some of these problems no longer a problem because we have fast chips that are down clocked right now so you know and and this is just the xr2 you know we know that 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 uh, Qualcomm don't just sit around twiddling their thumbs. These guys are actively working on things all of the time. They're working on new chips as we speak. I assume, right? We have we have headsets coming out that are going to demand more because you know right now the XR2 can support seven cameras natively to the chip, and we the cameras currently on these headsets. Um, are, there's four for tracking typically, right? But we we are now starting to look at at um, eye tracking being a thing. And eye, eye tracking requires more cameras. Uh, we're looking at devices like the 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 Pimax 12K QLED that want also more cameras to track your face, more cameras to track your body, right? So this is gonna demand better chips um, and, and more progress from the chip industry. And I think we're gonna get it because this, because I've, I've seen a lot of reports lately that that uh, cell phone growth in general is starting to slow down and starting to, to kind of um, plateau a little bit because companies are looking for the next hottest and latest greatest things and so are people. And XR is going, is starting its, its takeoff. It's starting its like hockey stick, you know, um, progress. Um, and so all of these developers and all of these hardware companies and investors are all starting to dump money um, into new chipsets, into new XR technology. So I think, I think where we're going here is is going to be beneficial to you. I don't know the the time, the time frame on some of this stuff, right? Because ultimately, it takes a long time, not just to develop this stuff, but then to get FCC approval for some of these things and some of these technologies and being able to put it out. And because we're ultimately we're putting this stuff on our face, so if things go wrong things go really wrong, right? So we gotta make sure that, that these technologies are tried and true and that batteries aren't gonna be blowing up and that chips aren't gonna be overheating and melting things in, in your face, right? So, I mean, we're getting there and I, I just, I don't know how long, how much longer it's gonna take. I know we are about to hit a whole bunch of new headsets. We have the the PlayStation VR2 that's coming out and the, 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 the processing power behind the PlayStation 5 is absolutely ridiculous. You pair this with, with dynamic foveated rendering that only renders what you're looking at at its full high definition um, you know, capability. And we, we have, you have a whole new platform where you can start to build some of these, some of these amazing experiences. Um, 
So I'm hoping that maybe platforms like Neos, maybe they're looking at stuff like this. I don't know. But we're also looking at things like the Meta Cambria, um, which which has a much higher clock speed. Apparently, I don't have any inside information. I don't know from Meta what's going on, right? But just from what I see from people like Sadly It's Bradley and, and people that are digging into the code, um, you know, um, people like Basti and some of these people that tear apart the code that there is stuff coming and there's stuff coming soon. Uh, within, the, within the year, we should have a whole new set of headsets that we can play with um, from the Cambria, <sighs> hopefully something from Valve. You never know with Valve. They're working on stuff for sure. Gabe Newell himself has said that, that the Steam Deck is part of the process of moving towards uh, better VR and better, better XR technology. But Valve works in their own time. They don't answer to anyone. They don't have shareholders. They do what they want when they feel like it, and they release things when they feel it's ready. So we have no idea what's coming, when things will be coming from them. Eventually, it's coming, right? But it's Valve time. It's Valve time. $5 super chat Ooh, flying in baby. high. Oh, my God. From Fur1 saying the future is cool. Thank you for saying that. Future is cool. I feel the exact same way. And Me I too. often realize that I'm living in it and that that is incredible. Like we are Dude. all living in Dude. the future right now. Right? Me, and, me and you literally went into VR and and went aboard. We went to an alien planet and then hopped onto an alien spaceship and tried to solve our way through a bunch of mysteries with live actors while you were in Arizona. I was in Colorado when we did this and you guys are all over the place. And I didn't even, the I didn't future, even rescue anything. The I, future is now. <laughs> I didn't rescue. You, you murdered I didn't rescue instead. anything. <laughs> a lot of Kill. murdering. Yeah. Well, so, you know, the hardware thing is kind of like, I feel like we're like constantly stuck in this like chicken and the egg scenario yeah. because what software is able to do is always going to surpass what the hardware can deliver. You know, like it's like mm -hmm. Neos is, you know, bursting at the seams, impossible to run on a quest. Right. And let's say the quest three comes out, boom, it runs Neo like Neos, like a dream. Well, meanwhile, Neos has been working on <laughs> making totally their thing right. way, way better. And mm -hmm. to now use that at its yeah. maximum potential, you need the quest Four. Right. So totally. there's always this chicken yeah. in the egg scenario. But this happening. is also called progress. Yes, it is. And this yeah. is how we, we, we get then, better. That and, makes it hard for guys like Jason really trying does. to like land where they need to be, you know, really totally. and totally. I'll tell you what, when you're talking about the PlayStation, I think that's the closest to closing that gap that we're going to see yeah. in a long time. The power of the PS five pushing that Epic headset with foveated rendering. Yeah. Maybe it's not wireless and maybe that yeah. makes some people sad. But for me, I think that that's going to be a, like the perfect combination of what the software is capable yeah. of doing what the hardware is capable of doing and should produce great content for a number of years. Yeah. Now in another five to 10 years, we are also going to have all of these crappy 2.4 gigahertz routers ever out of everyone's home. They'll all have died off. People replace them with better routers. Internet continues to go up in speed. I have a gigabit line in my house, right? Coming through normal coaxial cable. That's insane. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have believed that would have been the case 10 years ago that I'd have a gig running into my house. That's crazy, <laughs> yeah. right? So eventually we're also going to get to the point where all of these headsets have Wi-Fi 6E. Our routers can handle very low latency, totally. fast streaming yeah. with very very quick internet and we're going to be able to render all of these things on huge data centers um, run by oculus run by valve run by you know all of these different places did i say oculus i mean meta right meta. but like but where we're going to be like rendering this stuff in the cloud right with with banks of video cards that no regular person can afford that sounds great yeah that sounds and great. that's that's so what I'm we're moving gonna, i'm just gonna hold on man i'm just gonna can hold on until then yeah it's um, a wild ride bro hold on put yep, that seatbelt totally, on totally, we're holding totally. on we're going places we're holding on yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing what we can <laughs> well and luckily out. too there's we've got a really great group of people who support this project um so while it is it is difficult financially to keep things going um you know it's it there's a lot of people i will say and i'm so so grateful um that there's a lot of people around this project who working on it because they dig it because they like it and i'm not i'm not getting invoices and bills across my desk day in and day out um and mm -hmm. i'm so i feel just so thankful for that because um if i can create a, a little community around making this type of work um and sustain it even on this little you know my my little professional 
paycheck if we can just kind of keep plugging along and plugging along and iterating and learning and slowly kind of building um, until such a time when kind of everything lines up perfectly. We've got more people using VR in general. We've got more accessibility into, into Neos. Um, I mean, I believe in the product. I believe in the Metamovie project. And I do, you know, I, I, I do think that we just need to kind of this project just needs to survive long enough to get into the right place with maybe a little bit of financial backing with, you know, a, a lot more VR users. And then, um, and then who knows, who knows? You know? Well, I, you know, like we kind of mentioned at the beginning of this, you know, Skiva said that he saw the future of entertainment when he, when he did the meta movie. And I absolutely did too. Not to say that the meta movie is the ultimate, you know, um, like realization of that, you know, like, but I, I saw like, I saw like way into the future, you know what I mean? And it's like, what you guys have done is incredible. And there are a lot of moving parts and a lot of moving humans, you know, like there's one person for all intents and purposes. I mean, you know, the iBots are surely a part of it, but this experience is intended for the hero ticket for sure. So mm -hmm. there's one person in the middle of this storm of so much energy and effort being put in to giving that one person this amazing immersive experience, but it's taking like a, a squad of five or six people to give one person an awesome thing. And that is a lot of effort just for one person, right? Or maybe two, if you, if you do the two, the two hero thing, um, where I see this going in the future is the, is AIs replacing humans and procedurally generated content replacing the the pre-made stuff so like the ais will read your biometrics know how you're feeling about certain scenarios and change the experience based on that information yeah there definitely be things like that at the same time there's so much artistic expression in 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 people like jason that are going out there and working on specific environments and bringing these things out of their mind um, into a scenario that we can physically walk through and interact with. And I don't think that's ever going to go away, right? Because there's, there's, there's people that, that, that want to create. And when you start procedurally generating things, of course, there's creation involved, but it's very different. It's not, it's not that same vision anymore. And um, I am very happy to see things like this uh, be a thing because I, I'm not lying when I said I truly saw the future when I was in this experience. I was an iBot, but I still, I saw the future, man. I like, if, if there were a bunch of experiences from a bunch of different companies where you could just go in and, and every single Friday night, you could, you could go in with your friends or dates or whatever and just experience these, these amazing pieces of theater that are happening are all around you, right? I mean, it, blew, it melted my brain a little bit. It was coming out of my ears. It was absolutely insane. It's extremely good. So, yeah. Jason, what does the future of, of all of this look like to you? I mean, I think I, I would tap into what, what Skiva just said. I would love if there were other meta movies out there because I would like to go do one. Like, I, you know, I've been the hero in... Um, alien rescue for uh you know for during rehearsals i've done it i've been the hero a thousand times and i love it every single time but man i would love for somebody else to make a meta movie that i didn't know anything about that i could just go and experience and so you know we see places like the void you guys are familiar with the void yes. right oh, yeah. location based yeah. um so i mean i think you know, void i would yeah, the void. If you're listening, um, come talk to me. I've got a great, I've got a great IP that we can work together on. <laughs> well, they're um, kind of dead at the moment, with with hints right. of possibly coming back. But yeah, yeah, I feel yeah. yeah. I, 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 you know, I, I, I like those guys. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that, like this, I, I think um, for me, the, what is exciting about social VR, social VR our nickname for what the metaverse you know is going to be i guess at some point are these live events where you come together with people in real time whether it's like a a, a live vr concert where they do it right not some 360 video that's pre-recorded right. i'm talking about a right. real live yeah. show where the right. music is happening like right then and right there and you're with other people or or live theater pieces like the meta movie um or even just you know uh live uh, breakdance contests or whatever you know imagine all those different things to me, that is the power of of uh, VR and, and and metaverse, and so that's what I want. Live events. I want more 
things that are happening, like 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 uh, Alex was saying, where it's Friday night and I can I can I have a choice between going to see uh, a meta movie like experience or going to see a, a concert or going to uh, a, a great dance club or live comedy. Like that's what I would. That's personally what I like. I, I mm -hmm. like the the community types of events. So my hope is that um, that these platforms keep evolving, that we solve some of the thorns whether it's around crypto or it's around uh, harassment and bullying or it's around uh, accessibility or price. Um, I would like to see all of this stuff, you know, just kind of continue to evolve and grow. And I just, you know, I hope to be a, a, a tiny part of that, you know, and I hope that, that five years from now, uh, when, you know, you guys are the biggest, most famous uh, podcasters on the planet, That's right. you know, running, you know, uh, upload VR and, That's right. and I've got <laughs> another couple of shows and we get back together, you know, uh, Let's can we make a date for like, you know, 2026 20, or something? Let's get back together and, and do this. Dude, again. I don't know if I can wait that long. I might just come to <laughs> Alien Rescue again. It's, it's yeah, that good. I am going to do it again. Eventually. We've yeah. got um, we've got an experimental mode coming up called hard mode where your survival is absolutely not guaranteed. So it's more for like the, the kind of the, the first person Ooh. shooter type people where yes. um, it'll just be like, you know, permadeath um you know lots more lots more firefights lots more a lot more chances to die um we've got um all sorts of really cool stuff going on we're we're we're, we're, we're doing this thing right now where i've commissioned this um multi-cam tool like a, so i have a background as a live tv director i've done that for for a long time and i love the liveness of live television is the same way that i like the liveness of, of live theater or meta movie so i've got this multi-cam tool which I know I've raved to you guys about because I'm, I'm completely hooked on it. And what we're doing now is we're training a whole team, uh, even more people to entertain the one hero. We're training this <laughs> team of a multicam director, uh, Carlos, if you're out there, Carlos, thank you, you're killing it. Um, and, 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 and camera operators flying around in little iBot avatars. We are going to start streaming the uh, the live Alien Rescue performance through this multicam tool so that our Twitch viewers get a, a more cinematic, more curated experience rather than just kind of your typical nice. over the shoulder, you know, behind or a POV shot. This is going to be, you know, drawing from, you know, eight or 10 camera angles. So you're sitting there, you're watching this thing on Twitch, and it's like you're kind of watching like a movie because it's cutting back and forth, close up, wide shot, reverse shot, et cetera. And because Neos is so freaking powerful, we are going to integrate um, Twitch chat commands so that the Twitch viewers can, on a chat command, um, make an explosion go off or trigger a sound effect or nice. uh, open up a cage and, and, and have a skirt come out. So. Um, well, I guess I'm just is, rambling a little bit, but I'm, I'm, I'm awesome. excited about the future. I'm excited about the future of this project. And you guys should come back in. We'll do an experimental show with two heroes. We'll do hard. We'll, yes. we'll tear it up, man. So, we'll tear yes it up. to anything. Yes. Absolutely. Yes to all of <laughs> yep. it. Um, you know, awesome. we really, we really got to take our hat off for you, bro. I mean, you know, Skiva's, Skiva doesn't do that unless you pay him. All right. No, uh, that's just a little, little, little something for you. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but, uh, we really do like, we got to tip our hats cause, uh, we had our minds blown by the experience. It's already insanely compelling and great. And like everything that we're talking about is splitting hairs and it's like the Atari 2600 version of what the meta movie will one day be, you know, like mm -hmm. it's so early and it's already so compelling. So mm -hmm. huge, you, huge shout you, out you. to you and your team, by the way, the actors who we haven't oh. really taken a, ch a chance to, to talk about here, yeah. but, um, the actors that you guys have in there are amazing. I can only imagine what it must be like to deal with someone like me who's throwing curveballs at you like left and right, they, you know? They love it. They love it. Nicole Rigo, Kenneth Rougeau, that's how you say his name, by the way, Rougeau. Rougeau nice. uh, Craig Woodward, Marinda Botuk, and uh, and Christopher Turk as our as our actors. Um, they it, it, you're absolutely right though. This this experience would Alien Rescue would not be Alien Rescue without them they are what makes it work it's it's always what everybody says i mean the atmosphere is great and the and the environments are cool and everything the story is great but it's those five working together um and absolutely they they actually love it when when people are unpredictable as i said in the beginning of our chat for for us you know having done it so many times together now uh, when we get you know vanilla heroes are fine they're we're fine, but we we all I think we all like quickly because we have the eye tracking, so we can actually make eye contact with each other. And when somebody like you comes along and like won't tell us about the mask or like start starts to make uh, choices that are unusual or 
hidden path. Um, we all just kind of, I, I have these moments where I like look at one of the actors and go, oh, you're, 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 dude. so dude, you gotta, please come in and, and keep us on our toes, man. We, because that's Definitely how we learn will. too. Like we, we, we only learn if people, um, try to, uh, explore the outer edges of what we can do. And, and, you know, as long as you're, as long as somebody comes in with, um, the mindset of like, we're doing this together and it's not us versus you, we encourage people to try to break us a little bit. Like we don't mind that. That's how we learn. So is Nicole, the actress who plays my cousin or your cousin or the yes. hero's cousin? Yeah, Nicole, Nicole Rigo plays Z, your cousin. Shout out, shout out to Z and Nicole, because they're, the, I, there's this moment that I did not see coming in my playthrough where she was asking me about my mask or like asking me about my history or whatever. And I like snapped back at her. I was like, yo, you don't ask me about that. I haven't seen you in years and you're just going to, you're just going to start <laughs> grilling me. I don't think so. And she was like, oh geez. Like later on in the experience, maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes later, she pulls me aside. She's like, Hey man, like, I'm really sorry about that back there. You know, she like up took the time to apologize to me and like, I had to be like, yeah, it's in, all in good. Character. It was really, yeah, really you know, cool. like, like she yeah. really like got me, you know? And I was like, it's okay. You know, like we're cool. You know, like I like literally had this moment of like reconciliation awesome. with her. That was 100% real and extre totally unexpected. And I got to give it to her there. So you yeah, and amazing. your whole They're team, yep. you guys are fantastic. Yeah. Um, it's been amazing having you on the show. We talked for 90 minutes straight about meta movie and I guarantee <laughs> we could do another hour if we wanted wow. to. Yeah. Oh, good. Man. Yeah. yeah. So good. I want to, I want to let people know that, that you definitely, definitely should check this out. And if you don't have a computer to be able to run this, then maybe go and sign up for a free trial of Plutosphere where you get like X amount of hours for free, right? And then you can install Steam, you can install Neos, create yourself an account, go in and do this experience all from within your headset. As long as you have a good enough internet connection, there are definitely ways to experience this. Um, I would even implore you, Jason, to maybe explore some location-based VR um, types of scenarios where you could go in and, and be able to do this stuff to, to audiences that are walking through the door, you know, and like, there's just so many possibilities of, of, of this because it's so good and so compelling. Um, so bravo Thank to you. you. Like Thank we were you. saying, also, I just want to—I'll just throw it out. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll just throw it out there. We do offer desktop experiences for for Alien Rescue. So if you have a regular old PC, you don't have to have a super crazy powerful PC to run Neos in um, in desktop mode. As long as it's a modern uh, uh, graphics card that's not like the—I don't know how you call it—but it's like not the integrated graphics card. As long as you have mm -hmm. a, a pretty decent graphics card, uh, doesn't have to be a VR ready laptop or desktop, but. Uh, like if you, if you can run up, if you can play a regular video game on your PC, then you can do Alien Rescue in uh, in desktop mode. Uh, we even did an experimental show with a hero in desktop mode, which is kind of weird because you can't use your hands quite as well. Mm -hmm. um, but we worked it into the story, and it actually worked out really well. So um, yeah, so thank do you. Do this the, in VR, people. Yeah. Do this in VR. I get it. I get it. I get it. No, yeah. that's great, um, and it's really yeah. awesome. You know, accessibility, extra things, whatever. Yeah. Nah, do this in VR. Yeah, this is the most immersive <laughs> yeah, yeah, thing yeah, yeah, that yeah. there is. Put your headset on, yeah. everybody. Right, right, so, right. Jason, tickets are on sale. If you could go to the uh, the metamovie.com is where we have tickets. We're running shows every almost every Saturday. Um, hero tickets are only thirty bucks, which I think is a pretty decent price. The um, value is absolutely ticket. there. Psychic tickets are pay what you can. Like, let's literally pay what you can. We're not, we're, you know, we, we would like to charge more money. It would help us, but we recognize where the, where things are in the evolution of this type of work. Um, so we just want to get, we just want to be out there in front of people. So you, it's quite easy to, to get into a show of Alien Rescue. If you don't um, have I, 30 bucks, drop, drop a, a couple on an eye and yeah. get in there because it's good. You know, imagine uh, when when you go to the movies later on or something, right? I want you to imagine that $15 you spent on that movie ticket where you just sit there and you stare at that screen. But imagine that the actors on the screen are talking back to you and that you are the main character of that movie. And then drop that extra, you know, 14 bucks or 15 bucks to get that to get that amazing, immersive, personalized experience. It is so 100% worth it. It is absolutely worth it. So we're going to wrap this up. Yep. Like I said, we could go forever. So Jason Moore from the Meta Movie, thank you so much for doing what thank you do. Thank you, guys. Thank you for joining us. It has been awesome.
really really enjoyed it and thank you for the, the, the on, for the honest feedback and for the brainstorming uh that is almost more important to me than kind of being out here and spreading the word to your audience which is obviously super important for us but getting really good direct feedback um for people who come through uh, i don't get to have that uh, that deep conversation all that often so thank you alex and skiva um, for all of that feedback, it's, it was great. And I'm telling you, I'm taking the, the droid noise with the fucking cool down. That's yes. a great idea. Yes. Um, so I'm going to, I'm, I'm taking that and I'm going to credit you for that. So thank you. Oh, thank I you cannot, guys. that is beautiful. I cannot wait to come and see it in action. And we're going to get rid of you now, dude, because this all is right. just too fun. So say goodbye <laughs> Later, to Jason, guys. everyone. Bye guys. Bye, Bye guys. Jason. Bye. <laughs> Bow. And there he goes. Gone forever. There he goes. The man, the legend. That was that mm -hmm. you didn't even get to talk about to the top. Oh, dang. <laughs> that's okay. This was this was too good. I you know didn't want to taint it with anything else. They but there couldn't. there's 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 really some great things happening in VR. I know it's been a little bit dry on the news, but uh, but next week we'll get a little bit more into some cool things that are happening. Yes, we will. Mm -hmm. Yes, we will. What are we doing next week? Next week we have Andrew from Alchemy Labs, the guy, one of the guys responsible for bringing us Job Simulator, Vacation Simulator, Simulator, and also the new Cosmonious High, which is all of these games are ultra interactive. I'm sure you guys have played Job Simulator, right? Who hasn't played that? But but you will see where all the comedy comes from in these games because this guy is is a, a riot to talk to. He is a really amazing guy, and uh, yeah, I am stoked to have him. It's going to be awesome. We met it him is. at GDC. That's our little inn, right? Mm -hmm. Meet him there. Boom, have a great time with him. And we invited him on, and now he's going to come and join us. So we get to talk about Alchemy Labs and um, where they're at. And I would personally love to hear what his thoughts are on the release of Cosmonious High because I yeah. don't think it released the way that they thought it would. Yeah, I don't think so either, which is too bad. You know, I mean, well, it'll be interesting to kind of see what's going on with that. It will be. Mm -hmm. um, and to celebrate it and, and hopefully uh, you yeah. know, discover just who should be playing this game right right um so before we go for one with the extra five dollar super chat boom what's up dude Thanks. don't even know what Thanks to say so about that you know Thank like you. contributions are absolutely unnecessary but wholeheartedly appreciated yes and uh they go directly into buying things like these mic stands that i love playing with now that we have them and you know mixers and uh, getting us to events to cover things and mm -hmm. it's huge so. all things to make the show the best that it can be Absolutely. So, yeah, which I think we're doing an okay job, man. I think I so. certainly I know like you show. are you're doing good, buddy Yeah, thanks dude. Yeah, you too. Thanks, man. All right, let's go. <laughs> let's go um, Next week Andrew Ike from Alchemy Labs. Yes. Have a good weekend everyone. Thank you for joining us um, You know Kenneth who I know you're an actor in meta movie. Sorry for uh, for you know our standoff at the end of of the story man, but you know, you push, you pushed a little too hard Project and that's what die. happens. Um, you know, projectivity <laughs> XR blue bell, uh, for one with the donations. Thank you. And Nicole, of course, thank you for being here and watching the show. Hussein X, uh, Q2C VR gamer. We know that to be Eric Masher, mash daddy. Cool. Homie. Um, thanks for being here as well. Um, you know, Z storm games popped in blue bell, lawnmower girl, glitch Fandango. I saw, thank you guys so much for being a part of the show. We will see you in a week. Bye-bye.